Back with Brad Sweeney. My name is Andrew Sanders. Almost ready for kickoff here between NC State and USC Upstate. The Wolfpack wearing the home black uniforms, the all black look tonight, and USC Upstate in the white uniforms. Green numbers. We are underway. And as we get going here, we'll show you the starting lineups for both teams. Both teams coming off a win in their first outing. NC State, a 3-1 win on Friday over another Big South opponent in the Radford Highlanders. Meanwhile, the Spartans, a 1-0 win against North Florida. They didn't waste any time getting on the score sheet to start the season. Just five minutes in, able to put one in the back of the net. And out of his box comes Spartans goalkeeper Cooper Jennings. It was a one nothing win again for Coach Alkett and USC Upstate. A look at their starting lineup. That's his son, Luke, who gets the start tonight in midfield. It was Adrian Panay, the freshman, who scored against the Ospreys on Friday. Get you NC State starting lineup momentarily. Maybe a chance here for the Spartans. Left shot, it, left footed shot is blocked by Jarvis Cleal of NC State. Mondero, we told you about him in the open. Has it at his feet, trying to turn on freshman Irvin Cruz. And with slippery conditions, any ball in like that can be dangerous. It ends up in the hands of Lucas Hatsios, the NC State keeper. Yeah, USC also have had a bright start. They came out pressing, hard pressing, and then creating opportunities like that. But with this surface, yeah, crosses like that on the ground, bouncing, difficult to defend. Hatsius earned the start on Friday night, played all 90 minutes. And just the one goal conceded. Good work here by Mondero. He takes it away from Cruz and works to keep it. Julian Fernandez ahead to the middle of the park where Junior Nare steps in. Slide tackle gets it right back. Only momentarily. Fabian Dietrich making that challenge for the Spartans. This expected to be a tougher test for NC State. Depending on how much stock you put into the preseason rankings, Radford was picked at the bottom of the Big South. The Spartans picked third. And a step up there defensively by Elijah Jackson earns possession. It was Jackson, one of four players who played all 90 minutes in the opener. First road test for the Spartans this season a chance to play against an ACC opponent. Ball goes out off the foot of Penny. We'll get a look at the NC State starters, and here's the starting lineup for Wolfpack head coach George Kiefer. And the freshmen stepping in. All three played well. Gabby Velez, Yuta Toya, and Irvin Cruz. They impressed in game one, and they all three get the start here in game two. Yeah, Toya in the first game of the season was uh, particularly the highlight watching that game you know just that creative presence for NC State in that number 10 position you can see him here in the pockets that he's finding there he's always wanting to get the ball and he's he's creative when he gets on it in these positions his first touch he gives it up quickly gets a return pass switching the fields and a good step up it was Elijah Jackson Preventing that switch of play. NC State against Radford outshot the Highlanders 19 to 2. Sometimes shots not the best stat in soccer, but when it's that kind of a disparity, that typically tells the story. Wolfpack enjoying large spells of possession in the attacking third. And all in all, Coach Kiefer very pleased 
with the first performance of the season. See if that momentum carries into tonight's matchup again against uh, an opponent that is expected to compete for the Big South title. This is freshman Emil Theragod outside of the boot. It slips through both the defender, Carson Hickok, and Gabby Velez. Hickok just did get a deflection on it. Taylor using his frame, using his body, and earning the first corner kick of the night. State threatening offset pieces in match number one. Kendall Edwards, a good candidate. It's Theragod, and they say goal kick, and Theragod pleading his case, at least from what we saw. I don't, I don't know if he got a deflection on that. And we'll get a look. was called I think there's a case maybe to be made for a foul there but it was just called that's clearly off the head of Halkett Mondero out wide this Peyton Presley See Cooper Jennings a couple of times. He's been well outside of his box, very comfortable with his feet. As Fernandez able to take it down and a handball will go against Cleel. Couple of times Presley has struggled to keep control. Jackson playing near his hometown of Summerfield, North Carolina. He's from area code 336, just west of Raleigh. As the crowd continues to file in, see some Spartans fans have made their way here. No doubt some friends and family for Jackson in attendance. Another whistle, our referee Carl Kumer tonight, assistant referees Ross McKernan and Hisham El Bariki. It's not afraid to uh, call any fouls so far. Jennings picks out Mondero. So far, the Spartans have looked comfortable in their first away match of the season. It's been a fairly even start. I think both teams looking to press each other and then they're happy to clip it long when they need to. Turn over here. Taylor trying to push it past Jackson, and it's the freshman. Spartans have got to be careful. Those are the kind of situations NC State with that press, they will pounce.
Pan eight was in an offside position, couldn't go for it. So ten minutes in, your your early impressions fairly even so far. Yeah, fairly even. I think both teams setting up in similar similar ways, looking to press high. And then both are fairly happy to clip it long when they need to. And I think the conditions might play a factor into that as well. How does how does the rain that fell, which currently isn't falling, but we got quite a bit uh, just before uh, and it, the, this match and enduring warmups, how does that affect things? Yeah, the ball just moves a lot faster, and then that just means your touch has to be has to be right. But yeah, this uh, the speed of the game when the when the grass is wet and it's and it's raining, just the speed of it just goes up a goes up a notch. Good pass picked out by Will Buke. Nare, oh, he dummied it, left it for Taylor. And NC State, you can see the vision in the passing, building up play here. Maybe, maybe you heard a call from Taylor to leave it. See the reaction of both Nare and Taylor. Just that close. Second Wolfpack corner. It will be Butte to take it. Out swinging corner, headed back in the direction of Butte before it's stepped into. Two good deliveries from uh, Butte so far. Chance for the counter, and Cruz gives up his body to make the tackle. Yeah, had to make that tackle. I think whole kit was in on the far side there. Well, the game opening up now in a big way. It's Yuta Toya cutting to the middle. He'll try the shot and it'll be a corner. But we showed you the, the highlight from match number one. It was Toya slipping in a pass to Taylor. Taylor was calling for it. This time Toya takes it himself. He just finds himself in such good positions. He's just so smart finding finding areas of the areas of the pitch. And to be able to do it so early in his career, just playing in his second collegiate match. Butte on the ball again. I think he's put uh, two good two good crosses in so far. The two corners have had. Corralled by Cruz. Sends it back in far post over the head of everyone. It does stay in. And so Butte is really just dialing in his range here. Oh, good balls. Three out of three. I think he'll be hoping now if he puts in another one, someone's going to get on the end of it. NC State applying some pressure. Nare coming up, giving Butte a short option. Whistle and a foul on the Wolfpack. You like that if you're taking the corner, right? If you get to take a few in a row and really get the feel of it early on in the match. Yeah, I mean, 14, 15 minutes in, four corners for Butte. Um, on both sides as well, I think he's had three on the uh, left side. You mentioned that freshman Yuta Toy just finds himself in good positions and, and being as young as he is, is that just natural instincts? Is that something that that comes from quality training before college? Where does that come from? I think it just comes natural to him. You know, just watching him, you're just watching him the whole game. He's just constantly moving, constantly checking his shoulders. And you saw in the last game against Radford, you know, his first touch when he find, when he's in those in those positions. His first touch just sets him up to do whatever he wants. And we saw that with the goal he set up for Taylor against Radford. We'll keep an eye on Toya and that first touch, especially with the wet conditions here at the Dale Soccer Stadium. 
So the Spartans able to defend against a bevy of corner kick opportunities. They've enjoyed a good bit of possession so far, and we've seen certainly willing to counter and counter quickly when given the opportunity. This is Jimmy James wearing the number eight for the Spartans. From beautiful Greenville, South Carolina. Both teams are still trying to figure each other out, especially when they do have possession. Just finding where the space is. I think Mondero has got loads of space on this left side for, for Upstate. Taylor has a man. It's Cruz able to space things out here on the right flank, waiting for numbers forward. Had Nare making a run back post. Broken up by Elijah Jackson, enjoying a good match so far. Taylor. It is a goal kick. Was wondering if Jennings maybe had a deflection on it. Just side netting. It's a couple of times we've just seen him get position. He seems comfortable with his back to goal. Yeah, his hold up play is very good. And even the ability to turn as well when the defender's up against you. Velez here on the overlap. And good defending by Presley. Peyton Presley getting the start. Sophomore. Five starts last year. Put up a goal and a couple assists. Mondero trying to drive past Edwards and Cleo. Cleo closes him down. Well, the versatility of Jarvis Cleo play outside back, he can play on the wing in midfields. He could probably come in and play center back if you needed him to. Yeah, and early on, and even the last game against Radford, him and Cruz, you know, Cleo's looking to go inside and then Cruz is looking to come outside and just looking to balance off each other. Taylor stays strong, bounces off a defender, trying to cut it in, but Jacob Benz able to get back to his feet quickly. Steps on it, Nare's shot, sticks a deflection into the hands of Jennings. Scotty Taylor again, just looking comfortable with NC State, just bypassing the midfield, just playing up to him and then looking to get runners off him up top. Earlier you complimented his hold up play. That's what that allows you to do, right? Is, yeah. is bypass the midfield. Yeah. See the press from the Spartans closing down on Cleo. Fernandez, a left foot to it. Julian Fernandez, senior from Mexico City, played all 90 minutes in match number one. 
second team all big south last year there's toya brilliant touch he did not fool dietrich this time long shots oh and almost caught hatsios off his line Jimmy James wins it, and Dietrich says, I'll have a go. Not a bad effort. You could tell Hatsios was a little yeah. worried there, and understandably so. Fabian Dietrich, the junior from Berlin. Put his foot through it, and nearly had the breakthrough for the Spartans. Space here for Mondero. The ball a little out of his reach. That allows Cruz to make up some ground. This will be a fun matchup to watch all night. Irvin Cruz against Jeremy Montero. Zumzi Plamana, the midfielder. And the attack fizzles out. Sold Carson Hickok with the foul. So here we'll have substitutions as you see NC State ready to get a couple players in. It's going to be Luke Hilly along with Callum Tommy who makes his 2023 debut. Scotty Taylor making his way off there. Going behind the goal right now is Irvin Cruz. I think he was a little late to realize that he was had to come off. And so that's why the stop, the extra stoppage. I think he was just on the far side, far side of the field. They didn't want to, didn't want to make, that, make that run over. He just wanted to take his time. But. So Hilly coming in along with Callum Tommy. We started off in the open talking to you about nc state's attacking depth and this is where it can show up fresh legs for the pair hilly the goal scorer on friday callum tommy I haven't seen him yet this season last year coach Kiefer told us probably the fastest player i've ever coached so when you talk about him having fresh legs coming in just keep an eye on number 13 in black And again, he has replaced Irvin Cruz. There's been a couple of times where Cruz has, has had plenty of space in front. See if NC State continues to operate on this near sideline. It's 
Boston State trying to crack the pressure from the Spartans. Advantage given here. A difficult ball to deal with for Benz. Does all right. Side flag is up. Yeah, just a little bit ahead of Kendall Edwards. Don't mind that though. Good run, and there's good passing behind. Yeah, neither team has had a great scoring chance so far. Both teams have certainly looked capable. Oh, and Hatsios slipped. And again, the field, I mean, looks good on, on TV, and it certainly looks good from here in the press box, and it is uh, immaculately kept, but getting that much precipitation just before the match, it is going to be difficult to have your footing from time to time. to Toya. Here's Callum Tommy. Taken down and the referee tells him to get back up. Cleo with an eye for goal. Takes a deflection. Nare now. Corner. Well, you can see immediately what Callum Tommy can provide NC State just to keep this ball in at first. Student section, the Red Terrors, they certainly wanted it. No, good tackle from our angle. It looked like, it looked like, a, uh, looked like a penalty, but from the replay, as you can see, good tackle. Julian Fernandez, again, one of the better defenders, one of the better players in the Big South. Get a chance to counter. Pene cannot turn. He is shut down by Plamana. It comes through in a one time shot. Toya challenging Cooper Jennings. Yeah, good defending by Plamana. Had to make that tackle. quickly for NC State. Nore trying to slip a couple, trying to split the defenders. Upended. Play continues. And you see Junior Nore pleading with referee Carl Kumer. 
yeah, NC State just having a little bit of success from USC upsets, turnovers. Seems the confidence of the Wolfpack building here. It's time for the Spartans to send in a few substitutions. Coach Halkett will send in a trio. It'll be Luke Marin. It'll be Braden Hall. And also uh, Jen and Sir Magic making his way onto the field for the first time. Jimmy James just dispossessed there. Good hustle from the Spartans to win it back. This is Benz. And nobody on the end of that except for Lucas Atsius. Switch to Tommy. in match number one. He'll high five Junior Nari who exits. It'll be USC Upstate ball. Last couple of minutes, NC State just taking a little bit more control of the game, but both teams will be looking to create a little bit more, a few more chances. I'd say NC State have had a few half chances, um, not any clear ones. And the Spartans were strong defensively in the shutout win in their opener. State winning this long ball. Throwing taken quickly. First touch for Lovelace. Coming out. And Caden 
Tolentino sees his first action here in the first half. Just over 10 minutes remaining. Tolentino on, a sophomore from Pinehurst, North Carolina, one of many on this roster coming out of the NCFC Academy. with a hard tackle and he will see the match's first yellow card because of it. James starting his 31st career match tonight. He's one of the most experienced players on this Spartans roster and just late coming into Jarvis Cleal, who is still dealing with the ramifications of that tackle. things up springs Toya who plays in behind it Tommy and his first touch not what he was desiring good touch by Velez and then you just yeah Toya just finding that space again great ball into Tommy poor first touch I think he had if he had a better touch he would have had a chance on goal there see the confidence that Toya had in his pace. He was well behind the back line and Toya played him into space. Well, Spartans really gambling on that pressure. NC State unlocks the pressure. Chance to move forward. Lovelace does well, draws a defender, gives it up to Velez. Back post and Hilly was on the doorstep. Still kept in by Callum Tommy. Ball is still in play. Cleo goes back post. Jennings does nicely. Here was the initial chance. NC State were just able to beat USC Upstate's press. Good ball in. Just a little bit too much. But again, NC State finding a little bit of success as soon as they beat that first bit of pressure from Upstate. They've got so much space to run into, and it was Lovelace finding that pocket of space then. Both of these teams like to press. If it's effective, it can be smothering. That's the other side of the coin, right? Yeah. That's probably the, the best NC State has done tonight at, at quickly breaking through. And the Spartans scrambling to get numbers back there. Here's Dietrich. Sir Magic lays it off to Jimmy James, who just received the yellow card a moment ago. James, his cross blocks. And he has to lay off Callum Tommy, likely because of that card he just saw. NC State playing confidently here.
the foul was whistled against NC State, but Jarvis Cleal, who, remember, uh, picked up that knock a moment ago. Not sure if it's anything left over from that, an aftershock of the tackle from James or another issue. As hot and humid as it is tonight. It's going to give an opportunity for both teams to really take a hydration break. It's not quite warm enough tonight uh, for us to have a mandated hydration break. But as you can see, it's it's Cleo and, and looking at that left ankle area. Cleo just suffering from that knock he took earlier. See, they will make a substitution here and late in this first half. NC State, USC Upstate, scoreless. Second match for NC State against a Big South opponent. Again on Friday against Radford. It was the newcomers making themselves known immediately to Wolfpack fans in attendance. Taylor and Theragod and Toya, the three T's. Yeah. Yeah, Toya got the assist for Scotty Taylor's goal. The freshman for the incomers linking up for the first goal. And we've talked mostly about the attacking, but we don't want to overlook the defending. And it's not every year that you have a, a freshman starting center back, and especially one that you can play, you know, 80, 82 minutes along the back line. Yeah, their guards look comfortable on that left side. I think him and Edwards uh, forming a good partnership. You got a red shirt, red shirt senior, yeah. or a fifth year grad student, and a freshman. And you love to see that, right? That's that's kind of the the link of how, how much can can Kendall Edwards do as a captain on this team to kind of put his arm around the the youngster and yeah. teach him everything he knows. And I think they complement each other really well as well. Edwards very athletic, um, and then Fair God so composed on the ball, just complement each other that way. It has been a good partnership so far in the early goings of this season. See, Ezra Hoffman has come in for the Spartans. NC State subbing off Cleo. Jonathan Cisneros has replaced him. Looks like he'll play on that right side for the remaining five minutes and change of this first half. Seems NC State has been building as this half has worn on. See if there's a late goal in it for either side. First half action. Beautiful turn by Hall as he gets around the new sub, Cisneros. Edwards there to meet his initial cross. Here's the second salvo, and again, Edwards up to the task. Just all he can do is shake his head. Quality turn, nothing comes of it. with a heavy touch. Spartans will take their time on this throw and get some numbers forward. Nearly gave it right back, and they do. call here. It's 
Upstate are just looking to find ways to beat Upstate's press. I think Valdez has had a couple of times on that left side beating their press, and you saw the last the last foul on him. And as soon as they beat that first little bit of pressure again, we've seen it. This time it's the press yeah. that wins out and maybe a chance. Their magic shot is blocked. Kendall Edwards has been the man on the spot multiple times in the last couple minutes. Hilly. Springs Callum Tommy back to Hilly. Scored in the 60th minute on Friday to give NC State at the time a 2 0 lead. Again, final score 3 1. Cisneros is on side. Defending who else but Julian Fernandez. Yeah, he's had a good half, Fernandez. Dealing with Cruz for the first 25 minutes and then Tommy for the last 20. He has been put in some difficult spots. Edwards pushing off here. Spartans. Thinking about going quickly instead. We'll go ahead and walk it up. And they can use the clock to their advantage here and maybe get the last chance of the half. Just undercut by Jen and Sir Magic. And the freshman forward going for the ball, but Hatzios had it first. And the NC State starting goalkeeper, he had climbed the ladder. That is a dangerous play. Good to see him getting to his feet. Hatzios talking NC State trainer Adam Weshi. Brad, your thoughts on this play? Yeah, he saw him coming. I think it was just too late for for some magic to to pull out of that one. It's good, good goalkeeping. You know, he's got to come for that ball. That's the perks of uh, being a goalkeeper. It takes some courage on a play like that to go up. Yeah. There's traffic around you. Thankfully, able to stay in the game. Sir Magic sees the card. Referee Carl Kumer. This time, Sam Carson Hickok, get to your feet. Sends it forward. Two, five, four, three, two, one. And that two. will end the first half. Brad, your thoughts on the first 45? Yeah, it was, uh, I think both teams are still figuring each other out a little bit. NC State gained a little bit of momentum towards the end, got a little bit more control of the game, but I think both teams will be looking to create a lot more chances. 
So no goals in the first half. But some good chances and some good play pressing on both sides. Nil-nil, our score at the break. Despite some soggy conditions, ready for second half action between NC State and USC Upstate. No score in the first 45 minutes. We welcome you to the second half, everybody. I'm Andrew Sanders here with Brad Sweeney. Good battle between the teams in the first half, but no breakthroughs as of yet. Let's see what the second half has in store. What do you think has been missing for both of these teams, Brad, that they need to do in order to get on the score sheet here? Just being the final edge when they got when they get into those positions in the final third. You know that. The final ball. Callum Tommy immediately earns a corner kick. No. They say it stayed in. It falls to the feet of freshman Irvin Cruz, who's able to turn into the box. There's the corner kick. Tommy showing his pace on that far side. But I think it, both teams have made a couple changes at half time. NC State lining up with uh, Scott Taylor and Luke Lee up top. And then Monderos came, came over to that right side. This right side for USC Upstate. Always fun to see the adjustments made in the halftime locker room. So Butte playing with both Taylor and Hilly, as you so astutely pointed out. A couple targets. Along with Edwards, it's tight. Jennings, let it bounce once. And he likes to go quickly. Pugh's putting about four or five good corners in. Spartans looking to strike quickly and lose out. I know you would appreciate the handiwork of the number eight for NC State. Yeah, I think, again, I think he'll he'll be hoping someone gets the end of him because, that's again, that's four or five good corners he's playing. Cruz tried to play it ahead to Taylor instead. Defensive move being made by Jacob Benz. State have came out this half with a lot more intent, just pushing USC upstate back in their own half. We don't have the locker room mic'd up, but I have to imagine that some of the discussion was they were doing some positive things uh, to start the match, but especially as the half built, probably more. Yeah. More more of that. Yeah. I think they might have been talking about a little bit of uh, urgency. Just when they do have the ball, just looking to get numbers forward quicker and just moving the ball, ball around quicker. Velez, can he track this down? You bet he can. Cross, dangerous. Still not really cleared. Cruz trying to switch it, and that was sniffed out by Fernandez. Callum Tommy to Hilly. Better for NC State. Yeah, a lot better. Just getting runners in behind. At the edge of the box. Left footed shot will not trouble goal as Jennings just lets it fly by. <laughs> Jennings impressive in that first half. Again, hasn't allowed a goal in his career. Redshirt freshman from Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. Kept a clean sheet in match number one. He's done it so far here through about 50 minutes of action. Tommy draws Hall. 
Able to stay strong and stay on the ball. Into the feet of Hilly. Now Taylor providing service. It ping pongs around first off of Jackson and then eventually out of play. It is building here for NC State. Butte again will go to the corner flag. With all this momentum, the guard may not be looking to capitalize on it. And just keep the pressure on UNC Upstate. You see, off for a drop down graphic, 7 0 the corners. Yeah, Butte has found that sweet spot, but yeah. the Spartans up to defending. Yeah, they've, he's put in some really good balls, but they've defended all of them really well. Whether it's Jennings coming out to get it, or just clearing the ball like they did there. They've defended it really, really well. The USC Upstate has been organized, they've been disciplined. Taylor using his strength. It's there and put in by the freshman, Irvin Cruz, the man on the spot. You felt it was coming from yeah. the pack, and there it is. Yeah, they, they, they've had all the, all the momentum this second half, you know, and they're taking advantage of, the, of that goal, uh, of all that momentum, getting that goal. That's exactly what they were looking for. And again, we were talking about Scotty Taylor's hold up play in the first half. This happened in the first half, and he's just able to turn, cause some issues, and Irvin's in the right spot at the right time. And we've got a little bit of luck there with the deflection, but good hold up play, and again, good position. And I would say it's pretty much deserved based on this second half performance, the way they've came out. It's the first in the career of freshman Irvin Cruz. A 51st minute goal. As you say, maybe a little fortunate on the deflection, but look, when you're that close and you hit it that hard, it takes a lot to keep it <laughs> to go off track. Spartans. Looking for a quick answer. It was Velez with the header first. Cruz closes down Jimmy James. In the next five minutes or the next couple of minutes are going to be really interesting. You know, Dancy State just push and not come off it and try and get another one, or how the how the USC upset react to it. the goal, Scotty Taylor the assist, 1-0 Wolfpack. Showing some quality in the first half, but they have taken it to another level so far in the early going of half number two. This heads it along. Dietrich finds an outlet. Kelly in an offside position. Plamana was wanting the return pass. Not there. NC State just got to keep this pressure up. We saw in the game, in the game against Radford, you know they could have had a lot more goals. Radford seemed always within reach and always able to put NC State under a little bit of pressure. And I expect USC upset to do the, the exact same. Well done by Callum Tommy. Takes it down with the chest. They were God sniffing that out. Yeah, thank God just reads the game so well. Kind of like you were talking about with Yudatoya earlier. Yeah. 
Yeah, in the right spot. Accurate ball. Chance for Cleal here. Haley, a little indecisive, sticks with it. Ended up getting a decent half chance for Taylor. Shut down. Cruz tangling up with Hickok. NC State looking to go quickly here. This is Gabby Velez. Velez saved by Jennings. I think I'd like to see Cleo do that earlier on, just go himself like Velez does here. You know, he's looking for the runner and then he shifts onto his right, onto his weaker foot and gets a shot off. But Cleo was in a similar position where he opted to cross it into Hilly. But I thought he could he might have gone gone for gold himself. See the gaps starting to appear yeah. in the midfields. Yeah. yeah, this is where NC State just got to be relentless, just keep the pressure on USC Upstate. You know, in USC Upstate, they've got to find a way to, to handle it and get control of the game, connect a few passes. The freshman, Cruz, had a great debut and then gets a goal as a reward here in match number two. Good defending. Taylor takes a spill. It was Elijah Jackson there once again. Yeah, good defending by Jackson. But we're sitting on the other side from all the, all the benches and the coaching staff and we can still hear Kiefer, Coach Kiefer shouting forward, forward. one direction right now for NC State. And that is a poor giveaway. Helly's pass intercepted by Luke Halkett. And the Spartans looking to settle things down. Yeah, good reaction from Helly Lodge just looking to win the ball back and force USC upset backwards, but they've got to be careful with that, just those types of giveaways. Uh, USC upset just able to uh, to go the other way fairly quickly. Fernandez, middle of the park, into the feet of Halkett, and has it taken away, Emil Theragod. Easy for Hatsios there. If you stuck with us during halftime, you saw Lucas Hatsios along with Jeremiah Luoma, the NC State men's soccer program, Emika Kawagishi of the women's soccer program. Traveling to Washington, D.C. This July is part of the 2023 ACC Unity Tour. Benz doesn't clear it. In the end, no trouble. Hatsios, good to see him back for the second half. You expected as much, but took a pretty big spill. And a yellow card shown to Jen and Sir Magic as he was undercut. Not the junior goalkeeper. Able to hang in there. I think he's one player that we'll be looking to see get on the ball a little bit more for USC upset, Mondero. You know, he's one that can make stuff happen. Gain a little bit of control for, for upstate. Here he 
Yes. He's came into more of a central position as well, you know, to try and gain a little bit of control, to try and get on, get on the ball a little bit more. Balls won by Halkett. And this is better from the Spartans. Darrow takes a spill, earns the whistle. Good idea. Got Sir Magic in a shooting position, tight angle. Jimmy James has already seen a card here pleading his case and I think right there said hey I, got, I, I won the ball with my foot yeah it looks like he just gets a ball but he, his foot's pretty high and You know, those, those fouls are always given. Just even when their head's going down like that. James and Sir Magic both on a yellow card. Steps over it. It's Butte's ball. Friday, 62nd here. Oh, 
And that's what NC State have done well in the second half. You know, as soon as they win the ball back, they've just been looking forward, looking to run forward and play forward. And you know, and you can see what happens. As soon as Cruz got that ball, then he's just got one thought in his mind, and that's just just play it into Hilly. And now it's Hilly. Slow to get up, and he will receive attention from trainer Adam Weshi here. Just moments after his goal. And was that Sir Magic that ran through him? Again, he's on a yellow card. I think Adam Weshi has been there, been a little busy tonight busier than he would like. Yeah, he's probably played 10 minutes himself tonight. Yeah. Not that many, but yeah. he's getting his steps in. Yeah. And thankfully, Hilly looks like he's going to be able to... Well, as I say that, that might take him out. We talked to you about the depth of NC State's Fords. We've seen both of them tonight so heavily involved. Scotty Taylor, his, his physicality, his ability to post up, create that first chance for Cruz, and then Cruz a pinpoint pass. And when you put Luke Kelly in that kind of a position, it's not often that he'll miss. And he puts it away, and NC State now a little more comfortable up 2-0. And that's made a difference for NC State as well, having Healy and Scotty Taylor playing up top together, both involved with both of the goals. having himself a great night, a goal and an assist. Now, baby, the Spartans able to create something from a set piece. They've been relatively quiet in this second half after a well-played first half. Coach Alkid really pleased with uh, the performance in match one, especially as the match went on. He said, I thought the boys played fantastic for being the first game of the season. In the box. And he would have been pleased with that. He would have been pleased with that first half as well. Yeah, no doubt. He said that first match wasn't perfect, but the determination, the grit, the work ethic they had absolutely phenomenal and, and th those words work ethic and grit i think both of these programs kind of similar in in the style that they like to play and yeah the, and we the saw culture yeah we saw that in the first half you know just figuring it figuring each other out and finding a way to break each other down and like towards the end nc state gained a little bit more control but they didn't really have that many chances as did either team, but in this second half, NC State have just stepped it up a notch and took it to a, another level and completely took control of this game. Tommy hustling to provide an option for Hilly. The Spartans able to take it away, looking for the long ball here. Connecting along that far sideline, but Jarvis Cleal able to cover. Kelly head up, looks for a strike, and Jennings is tested and up to the challenge. Yeah, you always knew Hilly was going to go himself, and there's no way he was going to he was going to cross. I think Cleal was in a similar position about 10 minutes ago and crossed it into Hilly, but. Striker's mentality is just going himself here. 
Struck it well. Yeah, good effort. You know, made the keeper work. Comfortable save in the end. Cruz's night. What can he create here? Sweats a few. Irvin Cruz doing it all. Butes denied. Cruz is enjoying himself out there. It's by Mondero, by Fernandez. Halkett steps in. With two strikers on the field as well, NC State can just go wide and look to find Hilly and Scotty Taylor in, in the box. And I think it's, it's a different option they have when they're in the first half. They had Toyer as that number 10 position playing with either Hilly or Taylor. But now you've got you two forwards playing together. There, God hasn't connected on tonight as he sails it over Hilly there. Part of a top 25 recruiting class. And they've looked the part so far. Presley back in, Hall out. Anthony Cox coming on as well. He replaces Hickok. With those fresh legs, they'll be able to put NC State under a little bit more pressure. But the way they're playing this half, I think NC State might be able to deal with it a little bit more. Presley right in, fresh legs. Pressing Cruz, NC State will play it back to the keeper. That's what that's what those the fresh legs have done. You know, press NC State up until Hatchers and then forces him to go long, win the ball back, and then so Magic's offside there. will go the way of the Spartans. Quick restart here after Dietrich was fouled. NC State trying to protect its home field for the second straight time. They'll hit the road for the first time next Friday. Start off September, down to Orlando. Challenge UCF. USC Upstate makes their way to the coast against the shot to clears of Coastal Carolina. They'll be in Conway on Friday night. That'll be a tough game for NC State against uh, UCF. UCF upsetting Clemson last week.
test in the early season. It's a good schedule for Coach Kiefer. Of course, anytime you play in the ACC, you know you're going to have a tough schedule, but NC State playing five opponents that finished top 25 last year in the final ranking. him down. Velez gets it on his preferred left foot. A chance for Halkett. Again, creating for Velez. One, two. Fernandez there. Taylor, man on the spot. And a bit of a reset for the Wolfpack. Substitutions gives us time to show you how we got to this 2 0 score line. No score in the first half, 51st minute. It was Scotty Taylor who sets up this hammer from Irvin Cruz. And then Irvin Cruz and Luke Kelly to finish. You saw signs of it in the first half, second half. Yeah, NC State, as we've said a couple of times, uh, able to take that next step. And I think it just it comes down to the team and individuals just stepping up. I think NC State just came out in the second half with so much intensity. You know, getting two early goals in this half. But I think Cruz, you know, scoring the first one and then setting up the second one, but. This whole second half, Cruz has just played really well, creating chances, you know, winning the ball back, you know, beating pressure. Callum Tommy, a little late coming in, and it seems like he took the worst of it. Anthony Cox came in and got the ball, and then Tommy, who again was out for the first match for NC State, able to rise to his feet, but you can see grimacing. Just a bit awkward. Yeah, good tackle. Good tackle by Cox. I think he just catches Tommy with a following leg. Penalty. Penalty. Bondero pleading his case. Let's see, State already two goals to the good. And a golden opportunity here. It's a penalty, just a tangle of legs. Saw so Hilly was getting some pressure off one side. That was from Cox, and then Mondero comes in on his other hip. 
Jennings has been tested quite often, especially in the second half. He's played well. And the Spartans needing a save from him to stay in this bench. It is Butte. Barry. so good tonight with the service and he gets an opportunity on the spot to step up does well <laughs> the, fan, the fan in the background just taking off his shirt <laughs> no but yeah Butte's, his corner set Peter has been, been really good tonight you know, and then he's just taking taking the penalty good penalty confidence stepping up I think Mondero won that, won that one back. I don't think Hilly was going anywhere. He's going backwards, facing away from goal. I don't think he needs to get as tight as he does. You know, and then he ends up just tripping Hilly and giving away the penalty. Toya seeing some time here in the second half. And the combination of both Hilly and Taylor together has been good, but yeah. everything you see from Toya is encouraging as well, and that's the depth that we started this show talking about. It has showed up. The scoring for NC State, three goals now for the second consecutive match, and still a quarter of an hour to play. Toya. Kills it up and sails it over the crossbar. his second appearance of this match. frustration from the PK call a few moments ago and he'll see uh, a yellow card get another 
a look. I thought maybe they both had a handful of, of uniform. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of frustration there from Mondero. Still frustrated from the penalty, maybe. But it looked, it looked like he was good defending up until he pulled, pulled a little bit of Tommy's shirt, you know. And then Tommy reacts to it as well, so you can see why he's a little bit frustrated. with a good first ball just out of the reach of Kendall Edwards who is making that near post run. Presley. Good idea. Good, good, quick free kick. Tough to defend there. You've got multiple runners able to hit Callum Tommy in stride. his left and he's on back to Nare unselfish Taylor with a shot parried away and he gave up on it Brad <laughs> he had another bite at the apple there had he turned around Goal kick coming and oncoming also some more subs. We'll see. And I wonder if when he struck it initially, if he thought that this was going to be his goal. It's a dangerous ball to give away there from Mondero and Upstate. You know, he's, Taylor's looking to get on his right foot, creates all that space for Nairi. Unselfish. Yeah, he turns around and yeah. <laughs> Not his best touch of the night. Though. Yeah. No, but good intent though. As soon sure. as as soon as NC State win the ball back, you know, just numbers forward. And you can see with each coming goal, the confidence has come as well. Yeah. They just look to me, Brad, like they're having fun. Yeah. No, this second half they really enjoyed themselves. But it, it started in the first five minutes. They came out with so much intensity. And, but they haven't let go. They've been relentless with it as well. With the last game against Radford, you always felt Radford, you know, we're, we're always in the game a little bit. You know, they could always... always get something back. It was always within reach, but... this second half, in this game against Upstate, you know, NC State have just been relentless, just... just being on it this second half. section enjoying themselves a moment ago a flash of lightning behind the student section evidently more than eight miles out because that's uh, the range in which things have to stop and hopefully we don't see any more bursts of lightning from down that way Murray. 
Montero out, Hoffman in, Cam Murray outside back, comes on for the first time tonight for NC State. Yeah, and Velez has had another, another really good game on his left side. She's always up and down the field. Excellent support tonight. The supporters making their voices heard. They have been thrilled to see three second half goals and NC State maybe not content with just three. Yeah, and they'll, they'll want another, another goal, the Red Terrors. Especially, especially on that end against uh, with NC State, shooting that way. We saw it with one of the common which, which goal it was, second or third, I think it might have been Butte's penalty with one of the, one of the fans taking their shirts off. <laughs> I've mentioned as much in the game. Plamana, I think he's played really well. Gone unnoticed a little bit, but he's just been breaking up the play, getting the ball, keeping things moving. You know, he's just That's his role, right? Yeah, he's just landing on these second balls here, but he's just keeping the game moving. But we can hear him from here, he's always demanding the ball, getting it, demanding more from his from his teammates as well. Tommy takes a tumble, play continues. Long ball hit, trying to switch the play. And neither Presley nor Fox can reach it. I think Tommy's took a few hits tonight. I think Weshi, Adam Weshi, the trainer, might get another, another run out. Referee Carl Kumer coming to check on him. Initially told him get up didn't see much in the in the challenge there Ezra Hoffman came in from behind yeah. good good tackle though. he gets the, gets the ball Institutions here as you see Cisneros replacing Cleo. And Montero after that quick breather back out as well. NC State in firm control of this one. Really impressive showing against again one of the contenders in the Big South. Just able to finish their opportunities here in this second stanza.
again. Come on and just winning the ball and then starting this, starting this breakaway for for NC State. Steps up. Looks like NC State on its way to another win in this series. Fourth meeting since 2017. It was a scoreless draw. They in Raleigh back in 2017. Lou Killey scoring the second goal tonight. Second career goal he scored against USC Upstate. He scored in the opener back in 2021. 2-0 victory for the Pack. You played in that match, Brad. Yeah, Season bring, it, bring it back memories. I think that was my, uh, my last. Your last first. Yeah, yeah. my last first game of the season. I think you probably had a performance probably pretty similar to Vizunzi Plumama today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's played really well, so I hope I played. <laughs> <laughs> Win the second ball, keep it moving. Come in, free kicks. Lovelace, plenty of gas in the tank still in this late hour on a humid night here in Raleigh. Pre match rain went away. Didn't cool things off too much. with the three goals we've talked about the attack Brad but your thoughts on uh, defending isn't just a back line thing right it's a it's a team game and just NC State's ability to really limit the chances for the Spartans in the second half yeah no this second half it's all started from the front they've just they came out just pressing just forcing turnovers for from USC upstate but you know if USC upstate did beat the press you know, Kendall Edwards and Thay God, they played really well. It's just solid back there. But I think the majority of the second half, so I see State have just controlled possession, really limited the turnovers and limited the amount of time USC Upstate have had possession of the ball. You see Brendan Peoples coming on for NC State. Local kid out of Raleigh making his Wolfback first career appearance. Second season with the team. Did not play last year. Didn't play in match number one. Here he is. Seeing a couple of minutes down the stretch. upended transfer from Army along the back line
back down in Orlando on Friday. Spartans in Conway against the Chanticleers. Up next for both of these squads. Final seconds here. Plamana gives it up to Fox to dribble it out. And that is the final. Three second half goals for NC State. Irvin Cruz taking part in the first two.